Whoa, ladies and gentlemen. This is Tim down for living with MS in Tenerife. And this is the Aftcast Tenerife Afternoons podcast. We're back in business. Now, uh, those of you listening on the podcast, this is also being broadcast to YouTube and Facebook. So I will be showing a few things, pictures, but I'm hoping to describe everything as well so that you guys that are listening are um, are not left out. So I'm sat here on my balcony with my headphones on. I've got a light pointing at me. I've got my iPhone pointing at me. I have my Switcher Studio, which is an iPad in front of me, and I have a a Zoom H2 with a little furry head on it. And if I get really close, you get the proximity effect. But uh, I'm going to be a bit further away. So that's pretty cool. Uh, I've also got a bottle of Franciscana Weissbier. And it's the Dunkless Weissbier. I'll put it in the light so those people on YouTube can see it. And I'm going to take a little drink now. You might hear stuff going by. You might hear dogs barking. But that's part of life. So if this is Monday morning for you, I hope you have a great week. And in today's episode, we do not have an interview or anything like that. I'm just kicking it off again with the weather, the latest on COVID, and maybe an anecdote or two from myself. Um, Yeah, so here we go. So first of all, I want to go through to the weather. And I don't have any music at the moment for the weather uh, because I... I didn't sort it out as we were doing it. So I'm just going to bring up this is the, the weather, weather here for next week, according to Weather Pro on my iPad. So today's the 30th of August, 2020. And it says here that it was 27 degrees with a slight drizzle. But the drizzle actually happened this morning before I got up. And so tomorrow and the rest of the week is going to be around about 28, dropping off Thursday, Friday down to a 27, 26, and uh, a little bit cloudy at the weekend, it says here. But as we're the AFCAST, I'll just go backwards and say last week was so hot, we had a Kalima, and I'm just really glad that we're back to normal. And I'm looking now at the uh, isobars. There was a massive high that has just gone north of us now and to the west. So it's actually bringing a little bit of cooler air into the Canary Islands. But that's a good thing because we're back to our eternal spring weather pattern, which is quite good. So that was pre-recorded. And so now... uh, what we're going to do is to go into the latest COVID-19 update. And I have prepared something here that I want to try out. So those guys that are listening, it's just going to sound quite normal for you. But those guys watching, you might see... Uh, actually, you shouldn't see anything. So <laughs> this, this is quite good. So I'm going to split the screen here. I'm going to get COVID prepared... Then I'm going to go to the first picture, and you should hear some music. So that was my first uh, chance at getting the music done. And uh, what what we're looking at here at the moment is the total number of cases for the whole of the Canary Islands. And the bad news is it has gone up to over 4,000 active cases in the whole of the Canary Islands. I I don't know what's going on here. I really, really don't. And a lot of it is in Gran Canaria, but we also have had a spike here in Tenerife. So let's jump over to Tenerife. As you can see, uh, or maybe not, if you're listening, uh, in Tenerife, we have gone up to 737 active cases. 
and that is not a good thing. Um, most of them are up in Santa Cruz and La Laguna. Um, so if you're down on the south west coast, which is where we are, you'll probably see that there are only about 30 odd. Let me just have a quick look here. 36 in Arona and 25 in Adehi. So, uh, but if we look back at the Tenerife over time, you'll see that back in March and April, we had really bad daily uh, problems. And then it came down and down and down and down right until the beginning of July. And then it started up again. And this is from the beginning of July up until now. And now at the moment, we are hitting again over 30 cases a day on the island. But as I said, they're mostly in the north. And the south, the tourist areas, is not too bad. A lot of people have been saying things like, uh, it's the tourists coming. We opened up and the tourists came and brought the COVID. That's not really true. I think what's happening is that the families are getting together again. Uh, that have come out of the uh, the lockdown and they're feeling a little bit more uh, confident and big families are getting together at the weekends and the kids are going out uh, because they feel invulnerable. They're getting infected, they're coming home and hugging granny and then all of a sudden the whole family gets it. So that's that's actually what's happening. The evidence does not point to tourists bringing it in and infecting hotels. So, in fact, I cannot think of any one hotel that has been affected. There have been a couple of bars that have been shut down because one or two of the staff have got it, have tested positive. And in one case in the south, in Golf del Sur, that actually got overturned because they positive, ne they positive negative, they they tested negative after a while. So there's the swab test and the blood test, and one of them was positive, one of them was negative. But the actual one that, that's, that counts was negative, so that's quite good. And as I say, in the south here, we don't have a lot. So it's the tourists are not bringing it in. There's another meme going around that it's the mainland Spain people that are coming over on holiday and bringing it in. I mean, again, the evidence does not point to that. It does point to uh, somebody who is a super carrier coming and infecting a lot of people so uh, there's um, there is evidence that are there are asymptomatic people for people who are not showing symptoms that are carriers and uh, are infecting people so all you have to do not all you have to do but one of the main things you've got to do is to make sure that you don't touch things and then touch your face that you wash your hands regularly and that you don't put yourself in some sort of uh, risky situation, which is large crowds, or getting together in close proximity with people you don't know. Uh, as to the wearing of the masks, I don't want to get into the legality of it, but basically it's to stop you spreading droplets so that other people pick it up and touch their face. So the mask isn't going to save you. It's not designed to save you is to stop you spitting on a surface that somebody might touch and then touch their face. So if you don't spit on the surface, if they don't touch it, and if they don't touch their face afterwards, then it's everybody's done their job. Unfortunately, people are spending a lot of time trying to get round the law instead of realising why it's there. So that's my take on it. If you're one of these people that think it's all a great conspiracy to do something with the world, then I only wish that they could all get together and conspire to make the world a better place. So if that's all that humans can do is conspire to make the world a worse place, then the quicker we get rid of the humans, the better, in my mind. Anyway, that was COVID update. And uh, let's see if I can do the, the, uh, the outro music as well so I can't actually hear it going because I'm not monitoring but that, that should have worked quite well that should have worked quite well okay great then I'm going to solo myself here so I'm solo now and I'm going to take off the overlay 
Okay, so those of you listening, I've, you've probably... Uh, so what's he talking about? What's he talking about? Well, basically, I've just got this uh, live software that I'm now using just to record. So I'm not actually going live anywhere. And uh, so I can just record. I think I'm going to sneeze, actually, because this light's shining right in my face. <laughs> I do apologize. <laughs> I'll try and cut that out. I'll put a limiter on it. I'm going to take a drink now. Okay, so basically that was the podcast for today of all the information. Um, a lot of people are asking me how I met Christina. Now, I'm not sure whether I want to say that now. Should I? Yes, I think I will. So basically, it was 1989. I went over to Germany for the first time. and uh, Well, not the first time, but to live. And... I was in this Irish bar because that's where you could speak English and uh, they had live music and I got into with the click I was playing guitar as well and a bit of mandolin at the time so uh, I, I was in no way shape or form a professional mu musician I could sing a bit and I could play a few chords but that was about it and, but I got into the click and it was quite nice uh, as with every town that I go to I was the bee's knees for about five minutes and then people got used to me and after that I'm a bit I'm a bit over the top so sometimes <laughs> people just get fed up with me I hope you don't get fed up with me so how did I meet Christina well basically it was a university town and so I was like a little bit older than most of the students there. I was coming out of a mature student um, uh, university course. Well, actually, it was a college course, actually. I didn't, get, didn't go to university. And so I was hanging around the Irish bar. And uh, Christina was a musician. And she worked in a shop selling musical instruments and she was demonstrating musical instruments and selling sheet music and strings and plectrums to all the local uh, artists and uh, so she knew the scene quite well and she said if I fancy a guy I'll just nip down the Irish bar and pick one up when I need one so she had quite a good uh, healthy attitude to relationships at the time and uh, I didn't know her. And then a mate of mine, he was also called Tim, uh, he came into the bar one day and says, oh, met this girl, uh, quite nice, and we're going out. So I said, oh, all right, okay. And then I met her, and she was coming down the street, uh, Bruckstrasse, which is the bridge street in Regensburg, which is on the northernmost point of the Danube, and the Bridge Street goes down from the Goliath Street, which has got a great big mural of Goliath and David on it. And it comes down and goes over the oldish stone bridge in Germany. And right on the corner there is the Irish bar, the Irish Harp. And uh, at the time, I think it was owned by Paul Daly. And then he sold it to Rick. Rick married Ulla. And now, uh, unfortunately, Rick has passed. God rest his soul. And Ola now is uh, is the owner. So if you're in Regensburg on the northernmost part of the Danube, and you go to the stone bridge over the Danube, and you go to the Irish bar on the corner, and you see Ola, say Tim sent you. In fact, Ola might not be there because she lives in Greece, but um, Uli, if you go and see Uli, he'll be there. He's got a he's got a beard and a hat. Mostly a beard, but always a hat, a cap. So go and say hello to him. He'll pretend not to speak English, but he does. He does. Anyway, where was I? Oh, yeah. So this was the Irish bar, and I saw Christina walking down Bridge Street, and she had uh, a yellow blouse, and I remember blonde hair, gold horn rimmed glasses, no, gold rimmed glasses, and. Uh, a grey mini skirt and white high heeled shoes, beautiful brown legs. And I looked at her and I said, That's my wife. So, anyway, Tim introduced us and we said hello, but uh, 
I'd already fallen for her. She hadn't fallen for me, obviously. She was with Tim. But then what I did is I, uh, I had a friend called Donna, and she was also blonde-haired and very good-looking, ruby-red lips, as I seem to remember. And we were just drinking buddies. Uh, well, we didn't actually... Well, uh, I don't want to give too much of the game away, but we were just friends, and we'd uh, meet in the bar and drink and chat. So I thought, he, she is perfect for Tim. So I introduced them both, and they hit it off, and they ended up running away together. Now, they actually ended up getting married eventually, but they ended up running away together. And uh, the next time I saw Christina was, uh, he, Tim had left the scene, so I said, well, shame that Tim like buggered off like that. So uh, I said, maybe we could go out one day. And she said, yeah, yeah, why not? So then I wooed her like a 16-year-old. Uh, so it was quite a while, and then eventually um, I met her family. So they got invited to the town because they live, lived about 45 minutes away in uh, darkest Niederbayern. And they came to the town or the city of Regensburg, and we went out for dinner. And... Uh, they seemed to like me, but uh, her elder sister Birgit said his shirt could do with an iron. But as you can probably tell, I've never ironed a shirt in my life and never will. But there you go. So that's how we met. And uh, just to finish the story off, uh, Tim and Donna actually got married and moved to Canada and got a hotel together. Uh, they're not together anymore, unfortunately, but uh, they're both still in Canada. And we're both uh, we're in touch with them both over Facebook. And uh, Donna, if you're watching, hi. Sorry to use you like that to meet Christina, but uh, you were in on it, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Christina is actually watching some German comedy on the telly. I know a lot of you don't believe there's such a thing as German comedy, but it's Bavarian cabaret and uh, it's really, really funny. But you've got to speak the language like everything else. So there you go. So that was uh, how we met. I'm going to listen this back to see if I've said everything correctly. I'm noticing that I'm sort of slurring my words because I am on the third bottle of this. So, uh, prost, as they say. So anyway, uh, this is Tim for the AFCAST and for Living with MS in Tenerife on YouTube and Facebook and Buzzsprout and on your favourite podcast programme, saying thank you very much for listening, and we'll talk to you again soon. Goodbye, everybody. Mm -hmm.